This weekend post on one smart layers explained. Hey everyone, I'm Scott Davenport and welcome to InPost. Thanks for joining me today. If this is your first time checking out one of my videos. Thanks for giving me a shot. Hope you like what you see. And if you do, please consider subscribing to my channel. But today I'm going to tackle a question. I've gotten this question a few times over the last several weeks about on one smart layers. And uh, so there's there's a couple of angles to these things. But you know, in, in, uh, in short, a smart layer lets you re-edit changes you've made to a particular layer in your photo document. And there are, um, there are two different places you're going to see smart layers. One is when you're working in on one layers, whether you're working as a standalone or you've sent something from another program like Lightroom into the layers module. And the second place is what's really more called a smart photo. When you send a photo from Lightroom and use on one as a plugin, like to develop or to effects, you have the option of saving your changes as a smart photo. So both of these things mean you can re-edit the changes you've made in on one in a smart layer or a smart photo. But I want to show you how each of them work so that you can incorporate it into your workflow. If you ever need to go back and you know, make a tweak or make a change, you're able to do that. So let's have a look. Let's start with smart layers. I have this photo here of some basic palm trees. I want to blend some textures into it. So I'm going to work in the layers module. I'll click the layers module and the selector send this photo over to layers. This is where smart layers matter. When you're working in the layers module, they don't factor in. If you're running on one as a standalone program, then you don't care about the smart layers. It's only when you're blending things together that you care about smart layers because, well, you're working with layers. So uh, here we go. I've got this uh, single layer in here and I said I want to add in a texture. So let me just go into the extras, textures. I'm just going to get the first texture that shows up so we have something to blend. Great. Double click on that and I'll add it as a layer. So here is our texture layer. Let's go ahead and make it big and apply it. All right, so that's our texture. It's covering up our entire photo. This is what we normally do with textures. I'm gonna choose a blending mode so we can have it you know, blend in. Maybe, uh, let's see, screen, overlay. Okay, overlay, we can see that. Now, what's going on here at this point is I don't really like how the texture is blending, the coloring is off and so forth. I can change the texture by sending that layer to one of the other modules in on one. I can set it to developer and effects, local adjustments. I can do all that stuff just on the texture itself. With a smart layer, I can do it in a way that is non-destructive or at least re-editable. So here is our black leather texture. This little gear button, convert to smart layer. I'm gonna click that. And now nothing has changed on the preview. If you're incredibly observant, you'll notice that some of these tools have now become disabled. This is the caveat of using a smart layer is you can't resize it and you can't use your retouch tools on that layer anymore. If I switch to my photo layer, you'll notice I get my retouch tools back. I can transform that. I'm still out of luck with crop. Crop is the one thing that as soon as you have a smart layer, you can't crop. So workflow wise, you crop first and then you work on things after that. So let me go back to our smart layer. And I said, I want to do some type of treatment on this and change the coloring of it. As a smart layer, I have this layer selected. I'll send it over into, let's go into develop. And so in develop, now what I'm looking at is just the layer that I sent over, the texture. And I want to you know, kind of change its, uh, its tone or its color. Maybe I'll just take saturation all the way down. There's really not a lot of saturated color in there. Um, I can change the temperature, not going to matter much. Maybe I'll make it warmer and uh, maybe I'll just brighten the exposure. So I'm getting uh, not as much of that darkness in there. Same thing with the shadows, open the shadows up. So I'm just changing the texture. I'll say done and I'll bring that back over into layers and we will see that the blend is going to look a little different. It's a little brighter now, right? So these areas that were darker and darkish blue, they're a little bit brighter. There's certainly some type of heavier vignette that exists either on the photo or on the layer. We can check that by doing this. It looks like there is a bit of vignetting itself on the photo. That's okay. But uh, now let's say, all right, um, I kind of like that blend, but you know, I wish there was more grit or there's more detail in that texture. Well, I have a smart layer. 
good news. I can re-edit it. I can add filters. I can change settings. I can do all of that without having to create yet another layer or uh, you know do any other fancy type of work. What I just do is I'm going to hover over this develop thing. I'm going to double click on it and I'm back over in develop. I have all of those settings you saw me change earlier. They're still here. They're remembered. They're somewhere hidden away in that PSD file on one's doing its magic there. And uh, I can also switch over to the effects module and still work on this texture. Let's add some more grit to it. We'll do dynamic contrast and we'll make this like really crazy, crazy detail so you can really see exactly what's happening. You'll know that I have made this change. I'll click done. I'll go and save that back over. It's a smart layer. So now I've got develop settings in there. I've got effect settings in there and they're all reflected in my final composite. And if I don't like what I see or want to check before and after, you know, this is what it looks like now. If I didn't have all of those settings, I can disable just that individual layer, see what's going on here. It gives you a lot of flexibility. So smart layers let you re-edit treatments you do on individual layers. The second place you'll see this smart technology is when you're using on one as a plugin. I'm going to use Lightroom here. I'm going to send something over to On1. So I would just do like an edit in. Let's send it over to effects. Now, first thing I'm asked by Lightroom is, well, what would you like to do with this photo? Do you want me to include the changes you've made? If you've made any, do you want me to send the original? And so in this case, I'm going to send a copy with Lightroom adjustments. You can set your parameters, your color spaces, all that kind of stuff. Normal plugin type activities. So now Lightroom's going and creating that PSD file I told it to create. It will send that over into to on one and then on one's going to ask me do I want to do a smart photo or not so here's the pop-up we get right do you want to have a normal photo or a smart photo I'm going to choose smart photo and what that does is it tells on one you know all those changes I make in this edit module now make sure I save those in a way that I could re-edit them later so it does some special magic inside the PSD file and just so we can see that this is obviously changed we'll just make it black and white okay really straightforward like that and I'll go ahead and hit done and this is going to save out these changes to the PSD file as a smart photo and send those results back over into Lightroom Back in Lightroom, hit the I key here. We see we have our PSD file. It is indeed black and white. So, so far, all standard stuff, right? You've done your plugin, you've sent it over to On One, it's come back in the Lightroom. Now you say, well, I would like to make a change to this. Now, that might normally have meant I'm going to go and send this over to On One again, uh, and I'll have a second PSD file created and make changes. However, if we do that same edit in, and I'll send it over to Effects, remember this pop up. We have choices of edit with adjustments. I could edit a copy, make a new copy of it, or I can edit the original. The original in this case is the PSD file. Since I save this as a smart photo and I edit original, when that goes over into on one, I'll see those same settings that I had put in there already there. It's already staged. I can go and make changes to it. I'm not having to create yet another photo on my hard drive. This is what a smart photo is. And now I could make a change here. I could say, oh, let me add some contrast. And uh, let's say I really only want that in the shadow areas and maybe something like that. And I can say done. And that will now save this PSD file again. It's updating the PSD and sending that you know, back over in Lightroom. The, pre the preview will refresh and we'll have these contrast changes there. I haven't created additional files, I've saved some hard disk space, and I've leveraged the smart photo technology. Well, the tip of the week is smart layers or smart photos. Smart layers, you're really only gonna care about those when you're doing compositing work. If you're blending more than one exposure together or assembling different elements from different exposures, you need those layers. If you make a smart layer, you can re-edit any type of treatment you give to those individual layers. When you're using on one as a plugin, smart photos are useful, but you do need to be careful about when you're choosing to edit an original versus editing with changes. If you send it to a plugin, come on back, you make changes to that photo, you'll have a choice to make. Do you want to edit with the additional changes you've made in Lightroom, or do you want to edit kind of the original that's underneath? There are workflows for both, but understanding how and when a smart photo is useful, well, hopefully that helps you decide when to invoke its power. 
And that'll do it for this week's impost. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, let me know somehow. Comments on the video are always appreciated as our social shares. If you've got a question about photography, go ahead and ask either in the video or send me a private message through my website. I usually turn an answer around in a day or two. And uh, the, the whole point is the conversation that we're having so we can become better photographers together. I'm going to learn something. Hopefully, my answer will help you learn something. And that's the whole point. Well, until next time, my name is Scott Davenport, and happy shooting.